Okay, we're back here at EQ Checkout, and I want to talk a little bit about packages, categories, and subcategories, sort of. So I'm going to click on items, and when you click on items, you're given a list of your entire inventory, but the way it works is it shows packages first. And in this case, we've only set up two packages. So they're listed here, and we can click here if we just want to see which items are in that package. And then after the packages, we list all the rest of the items that aren't in packages. And packages are optional. You may or may not want to use them. But for a lot of equipment checkout rooms, they're, they're useful. So if we click on a regular item here, or if we were to click on one here, it just takes us to the details of that item, including the history. In this case, we can see before when it was checked out and returned. And this right here represents a reservation because it's green. And we could click there and we could look at that reservation. There's the item within this reservation. And of course, we can edit or even delete this item if we want. In general, though, I, I did want to recommend that you don't delete items unless you really need to. Like maybe you make a mistake while you're setting it up. In general, you shouldn't delete an item. It's better to just take an item out of service. Because if you delete an item, that's how you take it out of service. If you delete an item, you're also going to delete that item's history and its connection to all the users that have used it. and and all of that, and it's really better to preserve that stuff for your records. So coming back to our main items list here, let's click on a package and see what, what you get when you click on a package. So here we've clicked on HD Camera Kit 1, and you can edit these options. You can take a package out of service if you want. You can also delete a package. If you delete a package, the items within the package won't get deleted. They'll just become regular items that aren't in a package like all of your other items. And also, it's important to note that packages can be placed in a category. I'm going to talk more about categories in a minute, but one thing I wanted to explain is items have a category and packages also have a category. So if you have items that are in a category and you put them in a package, where do they show up? Do they show up in the items category or in that packages category? And the answer is always in the packages category. The packages category overrides the items category. Once items are inside a package, it's just that package that will show up and it'll show up under whatever category you've assigned for that package. So this view, of course, you can edit this stuff. And then it's very, very easy to add and remove items in a package. So if, if in this HD camera kit, we also wanted to include a boom pole, we just click Add. Maybe we wanted another boom pole and a C-stand. It's very easy to add and remove those things. And after you click Add or Remove, it's done. You don't need to go and click Save or anything else. It's just done. And when you're done, setting up what's in this package, you can just move on to wherever else you need to be in the site. Okay, so that's packages. Let's talk about categories now. If we click here, we'll see all the categories that I've set up for, for the various items. And categories, you should be thoughtful about how you choose your categories here because this is the first thing that a user sees after they've gone to make a reservation. They set up their dates and times and then their next thing is going to be to choose a category. So you want to make sure these categories will make sense to your users. And those are the same categories that we saw listed just a minute ago. And when you click on a category, it lists Again, first packages and then items that are available in that category. If they're unavailable, it says they're unavailable and you can see why. 
as an administrator, you'll have this link and you could actually click through and look at that reservation. Maybe it's something you'd want to change or, or something like that. Regular users, they'll see the times that it's unavailable for, but they won't know who has reserved or checked it out for that time. They'll just see that, it, that it's unavailable for a given time range. And of course, they can always click what's inside to see the particular items. So, so that's categories. If we click on a category, let's come to our categories here. If we click on a category here to edit it, it's similar to the packages in that we see here are the items that are in this category. And then any items in your inventory that are still uncategorized, you can add them if you want. And of course, you can remove items. So, and again, it's it's just like the package is very easy to add and remove. You also have these buttons, which, which let, these would let you remove everything or add everything that was over here. Just some quick shortcuts, hopefully make things simpler. So that's categories, but I wanted to talk about one more possibility, and that is the idea of subcategories. I think for most equipment rooms, you probably won't need subcategories. I mean, in general, you need to think about your user's experience, and so you don't want a huge list of categories and subcategories. You want to make it simple for them to navigate, choose that category of items they want to reserve, and then, and then pick the items from there. But in some cases, you might want subcategories just to be more organized. So technically, there's no such thing as a subcategory, but there is a way to basically do the same thing. And it's very simple. It's very effective. And I just wanted to demonstrate that for you. So let's say that we wanted to break our audio category into two categories. Let's say we wanted um, audio accessories and um, audio microphones, for example. Well, the way to do that is let's just create a new category. We'll call it audio-accessories. We'll save that category. Right now, it doesn't have anything in it. And then let's go to this category that's just called audio, and let's rename it to audio-microphones. Now, if we look at our list of categories, we've got audio accessories, audio microphones. There are eight items here. There are zero items here. So let's take some of the items out of this one, the things that aren't microphones, like a boom pole, and that and that. And now let's go to our audio accessories and let's add those things. So now we've got audio accessories with four items and audio microphones with four items. Now, you've essentially just created subcategories if you need to. So if a user now wants to make a reservation, those categories will be listed right together and they will easily see, oh, there's audio accessories, oh, and there's audio microphones. And they can click and, and see those things. You may or may not ever need to break things out into subcategories like that, but I just wanted to show you that because I think it, it can be helpful if you do. That's it for items, categories, and packages. Thanks for watching.